With less than 30 days out to the presidential election, Donald Trump is looking very strong in the Electoral College. Hello everyone and welcome back to On Point Politics, your number one stop for all things polling and analysis that is not beholden to any mainstream media outlets. Make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And so looking at the map, you know, what's very fascinating is we have the 2020 map, which was a competitive race, and then 2016, which was also a pretty competitive race. And what's quite interesting is there's a lot of underlying factors with this one that would point to a pretty big lopsided win for Donald Trump. I mean, you saw this even in the Biden aggregate, even since the beginning of 2023, the race for Biden was looking very iffy because of the fact that Joe Biden was only leading by so little in a lot of the swing states. The polling actually looked fairly similar to what it does right now. And what's pretty fascinating is that Donald Trump is up in my popular vote model by a couple points and he's up in the electoral college by 326 to 212 i mean he's just landsliding all of the swing states he's getting pretty pretty close in new mexico and virginia and is even picking off minnesota and new hampshire in my forecast as well including maine at large being a very narrow race nebraska second unfortunately for donald trump is still going to be lean harris because the district is trending very far to the left but other than that that is essentially it for my map donald trump is really clean sweeping the election and a state like new mexico depending on new polling data could actually get even more competitive than people are even realizing this state has the largest amount of hispanics out of any battleground state as well as any state in the entire country and so when you have hispanics moving 15 points to the right possibly from the 2020 election you're going to get a large shift with this demographic and a large shift in the state of new mexico that most people wouldn't necessarily suspect looking at the election shuffler we see multiple states like California, for example. Let's say you were to shift this, you know, roughly 10 points, right? Let, well, actually not even. Let's go ahead and fill in the New York Times because so Florida, the New York Times had a poll where Trump was up by about, I believe, 14 points in the state. So that can move the national popular vote there. And then Siena also came out with a poll there that roughly had the state as a 13 point win. And so, yeah, you can get a Harris plus three national lead, Nate Cohen, but that's only with your New York and Florida margins shifting Republican. And that's not counting for any of the other swing states. And so mathematically, just looking at the polling they've conducted and lining up with their national popular vote, it's effectively impossible for them to get a Harris plus three, or at least it's almost impossible for this to occur, even according to their own polling, because only shifting New York and Florida would produce the Harris plus three. And it is basically impossible that a single state on this map will not shift at least over 0.001%. And so because of that, that is why the Harris plus three result is it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. In New York, you have a lot of areas, especially in New York City, there's a lot of places with minority voters. I mean, that transfers over to Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Texas, Arizona, Nevada. Like it just transfers everywhere. It doesn't make any sense for Donald Trump to be leading in all of the swing states. So let's actually fill in our margins because I have the state of Florida roughly at that. I also have Texas almost at 15. I have New York or California. I believe it at a, I have it at about 20. So that's about right. And then the state of New York, I actually have it as about a nine point win. And so just with that shift, the Democrats are only up by a single point nationally. And my models in 2016 and 2020, 2016 was a little bit iffy. It, it, the popular vote for me was closer, but I was still able to predict the election almost perfectly while only losing the state of Michigan. And that was me not having the tools necessary to basically create the swing state polling. If I had done those, I probably could have gotten Michigan correct as I did so 
for all of the states when I created my readjusting polling averages for the 2020 states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Texas, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico's polling all predicted the correct winner. The margin, depending on how many polls were in the aggregate, were a little bit off. Funny enough, the less polls you had, the more inaccurate the aggregate actually gets. The more polls you add in, the better your aggregate actually ends up being, by the way. And sometimes it doesn't even necessarily matter if you have 30 polls and then you have 40 the margin may not actually even vary that much because at that point you have a good enough of a sample size that is the key importance and my polling aggregates actually weigh for sample size to give pollsters that have more polls in the aggregate a higher weight so that kind of gets factored in as well but look, guys, Donald Trump, I mean, if he just gains with Hispanics alone, if he just gains with Hispanics, right, let's say he's losing by the 51 to 46 point margin that I'm suspecting based on the most accurate cross tabs. If that's the case, guys, Donald Trump is only losing in New Mexico by four and a half points. And Wisconsin and Pennsylvania are effectively toss ups and Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona and Nevada already flip to Donald Trump in Texas and Florida just get stronger for the former president right after that. Looking at Asians, I mean this right now, I believe I have it as, I think it's around 52 to 41 in my cross tabs. The African American vote share, I believe we have it at 74 to about, I think it's roughly 21. I think it's 76 to 21. That's about where we have it, give or take. And then white college, I believe it ends up being around 51 to 48. So Trump does gain with this group. And then non-college, Harris drops three points. And Donald Trump gains about a couple points. And that puts Donald Trump at 345 in the Electoral College. Now, maybe he isn't picking off. You know, maybe he's getting about 64, which in that case, that kind of looks like my cross tabs that I usually get. I think he's at 64, actually. But that puts Donald Trump at an extremely good position to sweep all the swing states, pick off Minnesota, and get New Mexico into his column, and basically making Virginia and New Hampshire very competitive coming up. And New Jersey is effectively a single-digit race. Illinois is a single-digit race. Colorado drops below five. Like, I mean, it's just a disaster for Kamala Harris. If this were to occur, and this is about roughly give or take, it's pretty close to a five-point win, which is roughly what my model is predicting in the national popular vote, which accurately predicted 2020 and only missed one state in 2016 when applied correctly. Now, yes, a lot of my work does have to be based on some personal, you know, there is some personal things that go into the model. I mean, there is some, you know, manual, you know, analysis that has to go into these models. Having these models are only uh, numerically based is flawed, and that can create a lot of problems going into it because you need to have critical thinking skills going into the model in order to create something that you can test back and actually get an accurate result. And if you wish to apply similar or the same methodology, you can actually get a pretty accurate result for the 2024 election, regardless of what party you affiliate with or who you don't like or who you do like. And I do support the former president, but right now I'm here to tell you that based off of all the indicators, based off of all the behaviors of the campaigns, Donald Trump is the favorite to win the election period. I mean, he just is. I mean, if you look at the way the campaigns are behaving, I mean, Kamala Harris, they launched uh, Ombres con Harris. I mean, that's just abysmal. That is a huge play, you know, to the whole, you know, Hispanic vote. They know they're down with them. Tim Walls is going on live stream on Twitch with uh, <laughs> playing World of Warcraft uh, to appeal to who young men i mean it's just absolutely ridiculous and they know they're struggling with that group big time that's the problem they know they're struggling with that group very badly and that they need whatever support they can possibly get with that group but unfortunately it's just not working out for them to think they think they would want it to now maybe he doesn't pick off minnesota let's say he doesn't pick these off right let's say he doesn't get minnesota or new hampshire let's say he doesn't get them if this ends up being the map, I would have still been like way more accurate than 99% of forecasters just because the margin of error would have been so ridiculously low 
it would be pretty nice if I could actually predict Minnesota and New Hampshire. And my models actually had this for about a week and a half already. And we're going into October and Donald Trump has been catching up in the polling data. And a lot of pro Harris polling is actually falling out of the aggregate for me. And so that's going to become a very big problem heading into the final few weeks for Kamala Harris. It's really going to become a very, very major issue. And so if you guys did enjoy this quick analysis, make sure to go ahead and hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And make sure to go ahead and go to betonline.com where you can go ahead and look at the latest betting odds for the presidential election, including who's going to win the actual states and where they're going to go, the margins of how they're going to be decided, the House of Representatives, as well as the Senate elections. Make sure to go to the description down below and follow me on X, and I will see you guys in the next video.